Thanks, Scott. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here today to discuss some of the new features and benefits of Microsoft Link, as Scott outlined earlier. Uh, the biggest step, in my opinion, is the actual planning and definition of what you plan to implement within your environment. Uh, one of the pieces uh, that Link brings to the table is just the network involvement. We have uh, a lot of different decisions in regards to defining your network segments, uh, defining your site locations, enabling uh, the call allocation or the media bypass, and you have to define these rules up front for the successful implementation. The other piece uh, you should consider is just the whole user adoption and user training piece. I see a lot of people who do not plan this enough, and they end up uh, either extending their user adoption or actually extending the ROI that they planned on the solution. So, so the two tools that uh, Microsoft's included with Link is the planning tool, which uh, actually allows you to kind of go through different scenarios, planning the roles, planning your site, planning your enterprise voice uh, solutions, and actually inputting variables within the uh, wizard to actually define an in solution. From that planning stage, you can make tweaks and go back and answer questions differently to see how it affects these required servers and other pieces of the enterprise solution. Once you've built that initial site design, you can export it to Visio, export it to Excel, define the details within your solution for the edge and your internal servers, and then export that into the topology builder. The topology builder actually is used to validate and then publish your solution to the CMS database, which is a, a new architecture within Link. Instead of everything being within Active Directory, you now have backwards compatibility with Active Directory. Your user attributes are in Active Directory, but the rest of it is basically published through an actual replication system. Uh, you have one a master replication system that's the first site that you install, suggested that it's being on an actual uh, enterprise pool with a SQL cluster. And then each server that you install within your solution has a replica database. And this uh, database is updated periodically as uh, any configuration changes are made by the administrators. Another important piece, uh, the supported upgrade pass within Link. Currently, OCS 2007 and OCS 2007 R2 are the only versions that you can migrate a user from to Link. And you really need to have one version active and one client active. Um, just that's the supported mode. Um, the other item is LCS 2005 and earlier is not supported. So if that's your current um, environment, you definitely need to plan to move up to 2007 or 2007 R2 in the interim just for the migration. Here's an actual depiction of a, a very simple global topology that was produced within the planning tool. Uh, you can see there's a North America site and an Asia site. Off North America, you have one branch office. Off the Asia site, there's three branch offices. You can See a uh, listing of the servers that are required over on the right. And then if you actually drill down into the global topology, it gives you more of a, a site-level design. Here you have all the servers that were defined for the North America site, and you can actually go in and define your details within the edge network and then produce a report that you can provide to your firewall people, to your network people, to actually then start the uh, finer details of the planning stage. And example of the actual edge. So you create your DNS, you assign your IP addresses. Um, also, in the planning stage, you define whether you're going to have DNS load balancing or whether you're going to have an hardware load balancer. Um, coexistence is also a consideration in regards to whether you use uh, DNS load balancing or hardware load balancing. As uh, the DNS load balancing feature that they've introduced in Link is more of an application level, so if your clients will not support it or your servers do not support it, then you're limiting yourself and your high availability. If one server goes down that they happen to try to connect to, they will fail and then basically we'll have to reattempt the connection.
Here's an actual picture of the topology builder. Um, once you've imported it, you've made changes that uh, maybe you want to add a server, remove a server, add a SQL store. All this is done within the topology builder. And once those details are validated, you are then ready to publish this information into your CMS database. You publish the initial design for Link. If you have an OCS uh, environment, then you actually import your legacy environment so they actually are aware of each other. And the Link system publishes that information through its replica system. There's also some other considerations in regards to your coexistence, uh, just being able to uh, import the legacy configuration if that changes, and then importing your conference and information as it goes. So within Link, uh, the virtualization support has been enhanced. Uh, currently, Hyper-V and VMware are the supported host systems. You, it's defined to have four dedicated cores and eight gigabits of dedicated memory for each uh, of the roles. You receive about 50% of the published capacities for a physical server within a virtual server. Um, so it's truly around 5,000 users um, for a virtual front end, and your physical supports about 8,000. So a pool itself uh, will be 80,000 users of 10 servers. A virtualized pool is 40,000 users. The virtualized standard edition server, again, it's uh, 2,000 users. And one thing in the recommended virtual environment, they have a standard edition as a single virtual host and a physical host. So that and the monitoring slash archiving role are defined as being a single guest within that host system. Some other roles are allowed to be accessed within or co-located in the link environment that were not allowed previously. The front-end server, you can co-locate the mediation role. Uh, if you're actually doing mediation bypass, that's supported. If you're doing the codex over on the front end server, then it's suggested that you truly have a dedicated mediation server or a mediation pool. The other piece is the web access. Um, the CWA as you know it today does not exist within the link environment. It's more of a conference end client that's supported on the front end server. And this kind of goes along with the new simple URLs that uh, you can publish to allow for the meet and the dial in which uh, is then routed over to the front-end server. Audio video conferencing, if you have more than 10,000 users or you have a heavy usage on audio video conferencing, you can now split off that role into a single server or into a pool for high availability. And you can also kind of split and divide that among the different pools. New client, uh, you now have a single client that supports your IM voice and your uh, external conferencing web audio video. You no longer have your live meeting client. If a attendee does not have an actual link client or they're not federated with you, they can truly join via the attendee software client which is more of a SIG client, or they can attend via a web, Silverlight web application. So now within the installation of a 2010 client, it's an executable, and you can install that piece and the actual Outlook conference and add-in instead of the three installations that you had before. So the contact management for each user, it's a uh, change quite a bit. You have four different tabs on your client that allows the user to define what way they want to communicate. You have your contacts tab. You have multi-line, single line, different groupings that you can uh, configure within your contact tab. Your conversations tab, which shows previous conversations, so you can go back and actually click on the user from that perspective. You can search for skills within your organization if you've integrated the actual SharePoint 
to the OCS and define those skills. We can include photos from SharePoint or AD. And then you also have an actual voice tab, which gives you a dial pad interface, allows you to check your voicemail, and a new feature that allows you to test your voice pass and your actual vo um, audio device. So you can select the test voice pass actually record your voice and then play it back so you can verify whether your device is configured properly. Another feature of the link client is the actual real-time feedback of any issues that are detected within the audio or video stream uh, that pertains to the network, uh, your machine, um, whether you're a remote user or another user is causing issues within the conference, um, and your actual device. If it actually measuring different um, echo or maybe the signal to noise ratio is off, it'll alert you and give you a solution or suggested solution, which may assist. So the actual selection of your devices within clients changed and it has actually improved quite a bit. Um, before one of the pain points was truly a new user being able to set up the device and configuring it properly, so your audio came through your computer speakers, your ring came through your computer speakers, your voice came through your actual uh, headset device, if you had that, or your phone device. Uh, now you can actually switch between multiple devices, either before a call or during a call, and uh, choose whatever best suits your needs for that communication path at that time. Here's the actual dial pad or the voice tab within your communicator client. As you can see, you have your touch pad. You can change your pin. You can check your voice path, which is the uh, little handset with the check next to it. And also an example of uh, performing that test call. So you actually get prompted by a recorded voice that states uh, speak at the tone, and then after you're re you recorded your actual message or your test stream, we'll actually play that back to you. Here's just a depiction of the different tabs that are available. Um, on the left, you have the contacts tab. Uh, in the middle, you have your conversations tab. And then the actual feeds tab, uh, anyone who uses the notes section, or they've uh, signed an out-of-office message, you can actually see that when they're added onto your contacts list if you flip over. So if you want to make sure someone's in the office or what their status is, you can actually go over to your feed and see if uh, they've actually entered something or whether they're out of office. On the left here is an example of the actual feedback that you receive in a conversation. Um, in this case, it's basically State the computer's running slowly. It was a virtual machine, just for a test example here. Um, and then on the right, again, it's just another depiction of the uh, communicator tab and the capabilities of calling a contact. I highlight them. 